Hi folks. In this next story set, we are continuing with the idea of speculative fiction, postmodernism, and contemporary literature. Uh, but what unites these three stories is that they fall into the category of flash fiction. So I want to talk a little bit about what that means and uh, what you want to keep in mind as you approach a piece of flash fiction. So first of all, what is flash fiction? Well, you're probably familiar with the term short story, but it's important to, to note that short story isn't just a story that's short. Short story is a clearly defined category of literature. Um, the key defining characteristics are that they're intended to be read in one sitting, uh, but they typically follow one plot line and have one sort of uh, impression that they're working towards. Uh, and these are have existed throughout most literature, right? Edgar Allan Poe, most famously, uh, very much uh, built into the craft of the short story. And most of the literature you read in this course can be a short story. Now, on the longer side of short story, you have the novel. Uh, these are texts that are intended to be read over multiple settings, and they'll contain often multiple plot lines, multiple sort of key themes and takeaways that they're trying to communicate. And the difference between a novel and a short story is that a novel has hundreds of pages to communicate what it's trying to say. A short story doesn't. Most short stories are between 8 and 20 pages long. So a short story has much less space to give you all of those details, which is what makes them so great for a literature course, because we as the reader have to do a lot more thinking and interpretive work to sort of figure out what it is that a writer is trying to communicate with us from a story, or what message there is um, that the literature is communicating. Now, on the other side of that, you have flash fiction. And flash fiction is essentially a very, very short story. And flash fiction, um, a lot of uh, a lot of journals would categorize it as a thousand words or less, but we're looking at stories that are a page or two um, that are very very small. And the great thing about flash fiction is that it really distills a story down into its most smallest form. And the less we have to go on, the less <clears throat> clarity there is in what the literature is trying to communicate. So we get an even more interpretive. Um, abstract sort of metacognitive uh, uh, example of how to think about what literature is is trying to make us feel. And um, Jill Patterson, uh, who is a professor at Tech and a friend of mine, uh, wrote that uh, flash fiction is kind of like a firework. And I think that that's a great way to think about it. But to give you an idea of what flash fiction is meant to do, I want to tell you uh, where it came from. So Ernest Hemingway, you remember him, right? Uh, he is most known for the iceberg theory in which he only gives us the teeny tiny tip of the iceberg and everything else is left beneath the surface, right? Uh, and you read that in his story. And some people find that really challenging for there to be things, so many things left out. Now, flash fiction is not even going to give you really a timeline or a complete story with a beginning, middle, and end. What flash fiction is going to give you is a moment. It's gonna give you a tiny little impression and the, the urban legend goes that flash fiction was sort of born um, from Hemingway. And the, the legend is that he was hanging out in Paris with his writer friends. Um, there was a group of writers known as the Lost Generation that had um, expatriated to France and they're hanging out and drinking as they were prone to do in the modernist period. And um, one, of, one of the gentlemen at the table bet Hemingway, I bet you $10 that you cannot write a story in six words. There's no way you can write a story in six words. And Hemingway said, bet. And he wrote this, uh, for sale, baby shoes, never born. Now this, again, a largely myth, but the, the stories, um, the, the legend's idea is that this is the birth of sort of not only the six word story, which is still to this day a category of literature, but flash fiction itself. And I think this is a great example of what flash fiction does. This doesn't tell us a complete story, but what it does tell us is that um, a baby was expected because shoes were bought. A baby is not with us because the shoes are for sale and that it was a devastating loss of pregnancy or infant because the baby's shoes were never worn. And so what we get here is a feeling, is a moment, is an impression. And that's really what flash fiction is trying to communicate. It's not a complete, you know, it's not going to give you a beginning, middle, and end with a climax and all of that. It's going to give you a very, very small vignette to look at and to think about. And there are a lot of different ways 
to respond to and interpret flash fiction. So you are reading Ray Bradbury's There Will Come Soft Rains to segue from our last story set. Um, this is again him thinking about technology. Uh, you're also reading Terry Thiessen's They're Made Out of Meat, which is a really fun story of two aliens talking about um, planet Earth and humans. And then you are reading Margaret Atwood's Time Capsule on a Dead Planet. Now again, with all speculative fiction that deals with the future or with speculative worlds, you want to be thinking about how does this relate to our own life on our own world, because that's what special, speculative fiction does. Um, it's not about an alternative world. It's about our world. They're just using a different place to tell us about our world. So you want to think about what are these things trying to tell us about our world in this flash fiction set.